Um, this is about, as I say, lessons learned in uh, using a video for affiliates. I'm John Stefanski, EVP of Sales and Marketing for Koof.com, a video commerce company. So we've actually been using video for affiliates for about um, a year and a half, or oh, two years now. Um, and so we're really, the whole point of this presentation is to share with you um, our experiences in terms of video. A lot of people have questions in terms of how do I create content, what do I do with that content, how I distribute that content. So what we'll do is, really, I want to have an interactive session, um, limit number of slides. I know I certainly do not want to speak for an hour, and you guys probably don't want to hear me speak for an hour. Um, so what we'll do is we'll watch some videos, which I think is everyone loves doing, and then really make it as interactive as possible in terms of that. And most importantly, hopefully at the end of the session, everyone will have a much better understanding and feel for how they can better leverage video and really why should they be using video for their affiliate program. So what we're going to cover on the agenda is content creation. That's probably the biggest single question we get, which is either I have content or I don't have content. How do I create content? Then we'll talk about this concept of calls to action. Um, what, you know, how do affiliates, once I have this content, how do I distribute that content to my affiliates? And then really what we've seen, what actually occurs once I actually distribute this widget. And then obviously any, you know, Q&A that we have. So since this is all about video, we're going to start by watching some videos, okay? So here's our first video. I'm going to watch it. Each clip is about, you know, a few minutes long. I want you guys to pay, you know, very, very, you know, serious attention. These are very serious clips. And then uh, we'll, we'll discuss them after we play them. So here's clip number one. Good or bad? Oh, wait. It was much better. It was better than that. Hold on. No. Try that again. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Clip number one. The camera's all ready, Brian. All right, so that was clip number one. So what, what product was that talking about? Anyone know? Hummer, Hummer right? Pretty obvious. And it, what do you guys think about it? Was that a good video or a bad video? Uh, bad. Bad? So why was that a bad video? Boring. Because I clicked off, but after five seconds. Okay, so you clicked after five. It was bad, boring, five seconds, right? Lost your attention. Now, what you guys didn't know is I cut the last six minutes of that video. <laughs> So you guys should thank me. So be, I was like being nice to you guys. You're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. Okay, so I cut the last six minutes. Honestly, I didn't even watch the whole thing. 
I was, what my question, my big question after watching that was, what animal makes that type of sound coming down the mountain? That, that's what I was, that was like, I was like, what is that? Because I was like, so now, obviously, Hummer did not create this video. Or I pray to God they didn't because they need a new marketing or agent, agency if they did. But would any, after anyone watching this Hummer video, would anyone buy a Hummer after watching this? No. Probably not, right? And then to contrast the first part of the video, they show a scenic drive of a Hummer, right? You know, through the, I don't, that, that's the second part of it I don't quite understand. So now this is, again, I thought maybe this is not someone you know, trying to sell a Hummer. Maybe it's not you know, just someone, hey, sh you know, friend shooting it. But with the way that a company who actually used this video w linked it to their page selling Hummers. Okay, so this was obviously part of their sales tool to do that. So I think, is there anyone in this room who thinks that was a good video? Probably not, right? So, we'll talk, so again, let's, let's discuss what those issues were. One, the length was way too long, okay? Two, did not grab your attention, right? There was, even if you were, you were interested in that product, there was nothing you could do, right? There was no call to action, there was no compelling you know, action, which we'll talk about in the second part, which is calls to action. So video one, bad, right? Thumbs down on that. Let's take a look at video number two. I thought this would be fun, we get to watch videos. I actually meant to bring popcorn, I apologize for that. Here's video two. Hi. Here's another special found only at Drugstore.com, the uncommon drugstore. This week, save money on Method products when you buy them in a bundle. Choose from surface cleaners, floor cleaners, or laundry products. To save instantly, just click on the Buy It Now button. Just in time for spring, we're offering a bundle and save special on our non-toxic and all-natural products. We've made it easy to clean your house from top to bottom with our chemical-free cleaners. Our surface cleaners come in a variety of scents, or no scents at all, and they can be used virtually anywhere in the house. Meanwhile, our floor cleaners leave no streaks or residue, and they are completely biodegradable. And don't forget about laundry. Our detergents help remove common allergens, and they contain no perfumes or dyes. So bundle these great safe products and save money. Click on the Buy It Now button to take advantage of this special offer. Okay, video two, good or bad? Mixed. Okay, what was good? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? She's well spoken, she's attractive, but there's no product shown, and I can't see what I can't see it what you buy Okay, well, that's because I took it outside of a yeah. click. To, oh, yeah. Assuming that there would be a click to buy there, product, integrated. Yeah, product, you know, that she's okay, about. fine. So you want to see more information about the product, what she's talking about, probably would be helpful. Okay, what else? Any other comments on the video? Length, quality of the video? Boring. Boring? Okay. Probably wanted more informative. Okay. Okay. White background. Okay. Any other comments on that video? Certainly better than the first video, right? Okay. And we'll talk about where you know I'm saying the the other important thing to realize and where I'm where I'm heading with this is that not all backgrounds or videos, right, are the appropriate. The approach is not always the most appropriate approach for every single product. Each product and each merchant needs to approach the video content creation. Uh, from a you know step by step basis, and then we'll answer the call to action. Where I, if I was interested, I'd want to see photos. I want to see how to buy the product. We'll we'll address that. And lastly, video number three. Though this is a popular video, you may have seen this already on the web. But I, uh, for those who you ha who have not seen this, this is actually the latest in installment of the video. So take a look at this one and let me know what you think. Will it blend? That is the question. <laughs> And here we are in front of the AT&T store. And I'm here to keep up with the latest technology. I'm here to pick up my iPhone 3G. And I'm not the only one. Yeah! Hey, can I see your iPhone? You know you're going to blend it. Not me. Ah, this is great. I can't wait to get back to the office and try out my new phone. Got my new iPhone. So I'm not going to need the old one anymore. So I'm going to blend it. The new one is so cool. It's so much faster. It's going to keep me more organized. With all this technology, I won't forget anything. Now I'm going to blend my old phone. I think I'm going to press the smoothie button.
boy, iPhone smoke. Don't breathe this. Wait a minute. This is nice smoke. This must be 3G smoke. I blended the wrong phone. Oh well, maybe I could put this on eBay. Ah! Can I see your new iPhone? So good or bad? Video number three. Good? Bad? Any bads in the audience? Okay, so what's interesting is, does anyone, have anyone heard about these Will It Blend videos in the audience beforehand? Right, very popular. Now, they're selling blenders, right? And the whole concept is these blenders will blend anything. Garden hoses, figures, if they have like literally, you know, tens if not hundreds of things that they blend on, in, in their blenders. And it's been a remarkably successful um, campaign. They've sold, again, I don't know the exact number, but I would, you know, say, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of blenders from this campaign using video, of trying different things to blend, you know, all sorts of different objects. Right, and it gets trendy, and they do iPhone 3G, right? But obviously, it was very interactive, very useful. I mean, one of the things I personally took from the video was, I thought, you know, it was, it was almost a, 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 sell, a, a sell of the 3G version of the iPhone at the same time, right? You were almost like, all right, I may want to buy both, right? I'll buy the blender and I'll buy it. If I can package the 3G phone and the blender, that'd be the best opportunity. But the point is, it's very engaging, very charismatic, very fun. Now what I, I love it. What? There you go, see? It's sold 100,000 years. Exactly, that's even better. That's the, exactly. So we're going to talk about that for a second in terms of the video itself. And that's actually a perfect segue in terms of what we talk about now, which is the point of these videos, which we're going to come to, is to sell products, OK? Again, what, what generally when we talk about online internet video, right, most people associate that with YouTube. I've asked that question to 100 people. Literally 100 out of 100 people have associated YouTube with online video. Right? But when we think about online video, we're thinking about people falling off their skateboards. We're thinking about you know, people doing stupid things. Right? You're just entertaining type of clips that your friends are emailing you all day. Check out this clip. Check out this clip. You've got to watch this. You know, and the, the 27 forwards attached to it. Right? But when it comes to selling products, right, you could have a good time. You could be entertaining. But you don't want to distract from the main point of the video, which is to sell your product. Right? To cause someone to watch that and say, that's great, I want to buy one of these products, right? So even though that was an entertaining video and it was interesting, right, the point is that they're, they're driving you to actually buy the product. And video number two, even though it may be not as funny, not as you know, humorous, right, for certain you know, types of video, informative videos, how-to videos, they don't need to be humorous to be extremely effective selling tools to get people to buy the product. It's important to know your audience and when to use the right type of genre of video to appeal to the audience watching the video itself. So let's discuss that, the creation of the content itself. So first of all, thanks to YouTube, okay, anyone who has good lighting okay, and high sound quality gives a tremendous advantage over what I would say probably 95 to 98% of the video content on the web today. Most of the video content on the web today is extremely poor extremely poor lighting, extremely poor sound. So even if you yourself do not want to go the professional route, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of um, creating the content yourself versus allowing other people, just having decent sound and decent lighting gives you a huge advantage over almost every video out on the web today. That's, that's point number one. Point number two is that some video is better than no video. Now, again, obviously we're a video company, so I'm a little bit skewed towards video. But you know, almost every study has showed that video as a click-through and conversion tool performs much better than any other creative banners or click-through. And the reason why is that people are much more likely to engage in the video on your site than they are any other type of media. So that's, again, and that has nothing to do with our company or any other company. It's really, as a media, video itself is a very powerful selling tool. So the point is, even if you're experimenting and getting into the game, having some type of content is better than no content. And obviously, this mantra is true for everything. You know, as my mother always say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, 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 right? Is that this, there's a learning curve here, right? And for every vertical and for every business in that vertical, the important thing is to practice. What works for one company doesn't necessarily work for another. And what works for one product doesn't necessarily work for another. So the point is, is that for you, just like, you know, again, you don't have one creative. You don't have one banner. You're like, OK, here's my creative. I have one banner, and this is what we offer companies. 
What you do for banners is you try different things. You try different sizes, different offers, different you know, interactions on the banner. Video works the same way, right? What's going to work for you and your video content really needs to be an analytical-based decision in terms of trying different things, right? And what you may find is, you know what? You, you know, the intuitive guess is that having humorous videos, for example, may perform better than informational videos. But what you might find is that specifically for your product set, having a much more you know, short, informative how-to video or product description video from a selling perspective is a heck of a lot more effective than having something which is humorous and captures someone's attention. So you know, the point here is to practice with different types of videos and really, re you know, again, and, and try different things and not assume that you know, you're going to try one type of content and that's going to be the be-all and end-all in terms of being successful. The other thing is, it's no different than other creatives. It, you know, I just had a meeting with a great you know, sporting good company, Paragon Sports. In the back, they can wave. If you're ever in New York and need to buy you know, sporting goods, they're on 17th and Broadway, I believe. It's a good place to buy. There's a plug. Uh, I'll send you guys the bill later. Um, so basically, um, part of that is, is that this is a conversation we're having, which is that how long are these videos good for? right? And the answer is that for generic content right, about videos, they have a very long life cycle. So the content needs to be updated. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be updated as frequently as other creatives. That's really what we've seen. Is that obviously the big issue there is inventory related, product specific, but if you're going with generic type of video content, that that generally you know, needs to be updated. You continually need to you know, reach out to your affiliates and give them new content, give them new creatives, but the length of the use of that, of that video itself has a fairly long shelf life, and that's really what we've experienced. But again, the important thing to note here is that it's no different than other creatives in that it's important that it's not like you shoot you know, two videos, three videos, and it's the end of the story. It's something that when you want to reach out to your village, you want to continually update and give them fresh content, new content, to keep them engaged and their audience engaged, especially as you have repeat business. Someone come back to that site again and they've seen the existing video, you want to be able to continually update you know, the, type, the freshness of that content. Any questions so far? So far, okay, don't be shy guys, I know it's early. Okay, user generated versus professional content. So when Ku first started, we actually had gone down the road of going user generated content. Very, very quickly from a merchant perspective, um, there was great resistance towards user generated content, specifically because of branding issues, quality issues, quality control issues, all other type of issues. And we, we kind of realized that very early on that user generated content from a merchant perspective is something which is very um, difficult to get you know, past the marketing departments, you know, the, that hurdle of using user generated content. However, okay, I do believe very strongly that there is a use and a good use for user generated content. And there's a lot of sites out there that have made a business of creating user generated content. And the reason why is that the same reason when you go shopping online, most often what people do is when they're researching a product, they'll look at that customer review section, right? And having, being able to watch those customer reviews versus reading the customer reviews is something very compelling. So I think if you're asking me what the best, of, you know, if, if you had ultimate resources and you really wanted to appeal to the largest audience and you wanted to make the most successful product possible, what would you do? I would have my core video asset be professionally created, and as one of the you know, tools surrounding that, I would allow for user-generated content, obviously approved user-generated content, so you can control some of the messaging. But again, what we found is very early on is just to, from a merchant perspective, to use user-generated content, there's great um, resistance from a merchant level because of the issues related to user gen. Um, two, and again, this is another big question that we see quite often is, do I need to outsource the video production or can I do it in-house, okay? So if we take a, you know, a step back to the slide we just looked at, the fact is that if you have good sound and good lighting, that you're better than 95 to 98% of the videos out there, there's no reason you cannot get started with in-house product development. Meaning to get, as I said, no video, some video is better than no video. There's no reason that if you have a good, you know, decent, you know, either digital camera slash these, you know, digital camcorder slash external microphone, good lighting, that you could produce decent, good video. And when I say good video, 
meaning video that can convert and drive more sales. Okay? However, okay, I would also argue that outsourced production is obviously at a much higher quality level, and it's going to be something which is going to you know, ultimately outperform even the best in-house production. So I think it's really a mix of what you want to do, some productions. And again, it also depends on the size of your business and what you're looking for and the marketing message. The, obviously, the larger the merchant, right, the likelihood of that being outsourced, as you get towards smaller end or lower end merchants, really there's nothing wrong with doing in-house production versus having to spend the cost of, of doing outsourced production. What I would say is that the cost of outsourced production has come down so much is that you're really talking about somewhere between $800 to $1,000 per video to create. And that's generally for like a two to three minute video. You can obviously pay more than that, you can pay less than that, but you're, not, you know, you're no longer talking about this idea of Madison Avenue, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to create video content. You can pay really good content for literally $1,000 for a video, right? So that's kind of like you know, the ballpark number, but especially for smaller um, companies or people who want to get you know, dip their toe in the water, there's no reason that you can't start with some in-house production. Any questions so far on that? No? Be anyone awake still? Okay. Um, hosting, streaming, in-house versus outsource. Again, another issue, which is quality of the video, okay? If you go to YouTube, you'll see the YouTube streaming is not of the greatest quality. They actually just released something which is like high def or higher quality streaming, which you can click on a button and get better quality streaming. But the generic streaming is kind of um, low end. And a lot of the online sites, because of the bandwidth cost are so low, um, the streaming cost is, is, is pretty high for them to you know, give you a very high quality experience. However, okay, and this is an important part, is you have to realize is if this is one of my selling tools, that the quality of the video stream, you know, in my opinion, needs to be extremely high. Okay? And the reason why is, if you've, ever, if you've ever watched a video that buffers, takes a long time to buffer, or pauses, right? I see a couple of nods in the audience, right? Immediately, you're like, forget it, there's no patience, right? People have very little tolerance to sit and watch video, okay? And what I would argue for is that it's worth spending, right, extra money to have the quality of the video and the quality of the streaming be of the highest, you know, deliverable quality because that's really, if you're, you're capturing someone's attention. The second you buffer and the second is jittering and you're losing, you have a little bit of time to recover, but if it takes too long, you've immediately lost your audience, right? And that's really the death of what you're trying to accomplish. In other words, if you've already made the effort to produce content, you want people to watch it, right? And if it's buffering or losing frames, you've lost everything that you've created. So it's really of, I think, of utmost importance to be able to have the professionals and companies that do that, the high-end CDN companies, the Akamai's of the world really do that, because I think, you know, again, that's your audience, and that's, this is your selling tool. You want to make sure that you don't lose the, the user once you've actually got them. Um, so let's, any questions? Sorry, okay. So content creation, some, some best practices that we've learned. One, video, you know, the length of video, okay? If, as, as we looked in the first video, okay, it was ridiculously long, and that's after me cutting the last, you know, five, seven minutes of it. Um, the average internet viewer watches videos for on average about two to two and a half minutes. The average clip is about two to two and a half minutes. After that, you've lost someone's attention. So you know, the recommendation we have is no longer than three minutes in terms of your clip. Now obviously, there are gonna be some content that's not gonna fit within this, right? Especially if it's more complicated video or it's a longer how-to video or it's a number of different products that we're doing. But in general, as a general principle, we highly recommend for our clients to keep their video content to no more than two to three minutes max, right? And even within that two to three minutes, to make it as concise and as short as possible because people's attention spans continue to decrease. So you really want to get your message across as quickly as possible because you don't want to, have, you don't want to lose them, right? And if something's too long, right, even if we think back to the first video, right, the first, you know, 20, you know, 10 seconds, it was, you know, what, what, what's going to happen here? And after the next five seconds, you're like, that's it, I'm gone. You know, it, it was very painful for me to actually capture that entire video because I, I couldn't stand watching it, right? That's, that's the worst thing in the world. So concise and keep your video down to as short as possible. And our recommendation would be no more than two to three minutes. As I said, I keep going back to this, good sound and lighting, right? Again, another death knell of videos 
you can't hear what the person's saying, you can't see the product they're talking about, you've lost your audience. Um, the other thing is create multiple versions of your content to test with, right? If you're already going out and shooting the content, what you know, we highly recommend again as well is that have multiple versions of this. Try it with a call to action embedded, without a call to action. What, try A-B testing, what works, what doesn't work, right? And again, the point is, is that there's no real additional cost to create multiple versions of the video, whether you're doing that in-house or externally, you know, to have basically different editing, which is, okay, we're gonna take two different takes of this, the minimal cost, right, extra, is worth the ability to see what works and what doesn't work. Because since video is really so early in terms of selling tool and performance, right, on an individual basis, it's very important to be able to test what works and what doesn't work for your business. Um, and then in terms of, you know, as I said, genre, which is have fun with this, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be all informative, all fun, all product demo. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Jason sitting over here from 24-7 Shops, they're one of our customers. Um, they have video for a whole bunch of their different brand, Cornerstock Baby Gifts, My Wedding Favors, et cetera. What they've done is they've taken kind of videos of the product itself with an overlay in the background. No offense to Jason, but you know, I'm not sure that those are the most exciting videos, right? However, they're extremely effective videos, right? And then you would think, right, if you watch this video, you'd be like, okay, is this gonna sell or not sell? But, in, and Jason could tell you that the click-throughs, from, a, from a, this genre and this audience and the people who are watching this, those types of videos are extremely, extremely effective. Sorry, Jason, go ahead. Actually, you know, we don't have, we didn't really have a big budget for those, and they're just images that are being moved, and we got a, we had them outsourced for like $40 each, so yeah. it worked for us. And it was great, and they're extremely effective. Extremely effective. So the point is, is that you could say, no, we want someone there, we want you know, a big background, we want to cut a number of people, we want it to be humorous, we want it to be fun. But the point is that you know, literally for 40 bucks, 50 bucks, right, you have a very powerful now media right, to offer to your affiliates and help drive incremental sales. So the point is, is that you, know, you could sit in a room and we, and we can all brainstorm on an individual basis what's going to work, what's not going to work. Really, the idea is to create multiple different ver you know, genres of type right, humorous videos, informative videos, product demo, et cetera, and, and get it out there. And once you get it out there and actually make it, as I say, analytical based to see what works, right, you, you'll be surprised by what converts and what doesn't convert. Because the natural tendency that everyone has, especially with this online video mindset, is to make the video humorous, right? That's what we're used to seeing on these online videos. Fun, engaging, will it blend type of videos, that's how I'm gonna capture people's attention. But that doesn't necessarily translate into more sales, right? You may be much more effective having moving pictures with an overlay background voice, save a lot of money, and drive more sales than having someone laugh after 30 seconds but not being engaged to buy your product. So it really, you know, the, my point here is, and I can't underscore this enough, is to try different things, and then based upon the results, then you could really hone in on the types of genre of, of videos they're going to be most effective for you to drive sales. And the last thing here is include a call to action, right? Again, the, you know, we talked about this before, which is the first video, even if I was interested, right? You know, I think, again, you want to include calls to action. And this is kind of, you know, one of the things which I think you should include call to action, not include call to action. If you look at the online home shopping televisions, right, they don't overtly have a call to action. It's not like, you know, the classic infomercials where they're like, you know, buy it now, if you order today, you know, we'll give you the free Ginsu knives, you know, 24, you know, and if you order today, we'll give you this extra, you know, set of knife for free shipping in the next, for the next, you know, 25 callers, right? Every caller is the next 25th caller, but, right? The point is, is that it doesn't have to be an extremely hard sell, but it, I think it's worthwhile that to direct people, and we'll talk about why it's important to direct people. So let me, I'm gonna play you guys. This is actually something I edited. I, what happens in our office is, if you're not there, you're, if your voicemail picks up, it gets converted to your email. So this was an email I received. So I walked in one morning, and this was an, a, a, I promise you, this was a voicemail that I received. And I wanna hear your feedback on this. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Long, and I'm calling from, we are a learning and development company. Um, we specialize in negotiations training, presentations training, as well as overall consultative selling approaches. My telephone number here is, Seven four 
0-7. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, that's the, that's the voicemail I got. I hope, hope no one in this room left me that voicemail. Please tell me they did. Okay, good. Now I can bash that person. Okay, so let me, let me just, I don't know if, it was hard, if you heard that exactly, especially this, com, this guy calls me up. He helps people with their sales approach, okay? And here's his phone number. What, what was missing with that call? What? Call to action, what? Yeah, what's in it for me, right? I just, I'm just going to replay this for one more second because it's like a quick call. I just want you to listen again. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Long, and I'm Hi. calling from We Are a Learning and Development Company. Um, we specialize in negotiations training, presentations training, as well as overall consultative selling approaches. My telephone number here is 7407. Thanks a lot. Bye. So this guy sells consultative <coughs> selling approaches. Okay, and his, his whole call to action was, my number is X, you know, thank you. And I was waiting, and, and therefore, right, what I was waiting for was the obvious, and, you know, I looked at your site, we've had great success with similar companies to yours, you know, if you take a look at this, you know, I'd really appreciate five minutes of your time because we can do X, Y, and Z. This is a guy selling me on consultative selling approaches with no sales pitch. Right? Which is why the point is that where's the call to action? Right? I mean, you call me up and you leave me a voicemail and you don't tell me what to do. You just leave me your phone number. Is there any reason, would anyone return that phone call in this room? If someone's selling consultative selling? No. Right? So the point is that you need a call to action. Okay? And I keep, I keep talking about this in the video and I'm going to continue. You'll probably hear me say this 25 more times. We are all in this room here to make money. Okay? The point of these videos is to sell products. It's not for entertainment, it's not for marketing, it's to sell products, right? And the reason why that's important is, what do you want them to do? Tell them, right? I remember I was talking to someone yesterday, right, at our booth, and he was saying, I'm not really sure, you know, X, Y, and Z, how would we make this work? And they did, they basically do like custom designed um, or logo embroidered um, company, you know, products. So I, so we went to their website together, and I asked them, I'm like, well, what quality is that shirt? He's like, well, you know, what I'm saying it's not like you know, like Myrtle Beach quality, but it's probably comparable to Lands End or you know, other type of companies like that. And I said, that's great. That you know, you have to tell me something, right? The point of a video is to inform me of something that you can't otherwise, or better way to inform me of that. You know, outside of direct selling person to person, video is your best opportunity to convey a message to somebody in terms of the point you want to get across. So when you're creating this content, what, do you, what is the message that you're trying to come across with in your video? That's what you need to think about when you talk about this call to action. What do I want you to do? Okay? And obviously we talked about this a little bit, which is, this is there's a difference between the soft sell and the hard sell, right? No one here is saying, you know, you know order one today, buy it now, your classic infomercial. Right? I don't think you have to go hard sell, right? but there's nothing wrong with telling people that, hey, if you want more information, buy it now, or, or running the special, or this is a limited time offer, right? to incent people to do something. Okay? This is not your classic infomercial. We're not you know, hardcore selling. The other thing which is important to realize is that there are audio learners and visual learners. And what do I mean by that? Is that if you don't include an audio call to action telling people what you want them to do, there's a certain segment of people that learn by you listening, right? So if you have in the video a, a call to action telling them what to do, for those people that learn by hearing, will be much more inclined to take an action because you've told them to do that, right? And then there are obviously visual learners, people who want to see a product, read a review, so you need to incorporate that as well, right? And that's why they like watching videos, because they can see products, they can see ancillary information tied to that. So what you want to do is, the reason to include a call to action is to appeal to both audiences, those people who learn by listening and those people who learn by seeing. So by, by including a call to action, you appeal to the audio listeners. If you don't, you're not, if you're just describing a product and not telling them what to do, you're really, you may be missing a segment of the population that really is better learning by, by hearing. And just I'm running a little bit long on time, so I'll keep moving things up a little bit. Affiliate distribution and configuration. So now that you've created this content, right, you have great, you know, have good call to action in your videos, they're compelling, you have different genres, you have different types of videos you're playing with, and you actually want to deploy them and get them out to your affiliates, the question is how do you do that? So 
almost every merchant that I've dealt with likes, well, I shouldn't say that. Every, every merchant I, that, I, that we deal with feels more comfortable having their video integrated into their backend network. So whether that's CJ, Linkshare, et cetera, they prefer to have all their creatives. Why? Because the mindset is my affiliates know to go into Linkshare, right, grab my banner, grab my text-based link, okay? So what I want is I want, you know, this, this video content to be in the back end, and my affiliates can grab this content just as easily as they can grab any other type of creative, right? And that's going to be the best way to get uptake by my affiliate base, okay? So that's option number one, right? The other option is to have what we call a widget configuration page that allows affiliates, because the challenge with the network pages is that it's, it's generally static. When you think about your creatives, if you want to have multiple uh, sizes of your creative, you need to upload multiple um, iterations of that. When it comes to something which is a widget based where there's configuration options, sizing, non-autoplay, autoplay, features, functionality that can be turned on and off, you, you don't have that functionality in any of these net network backends. So if you can also offer your affiliates the ability to configure the widget outside of um, the classic network backend. What do I mean by that? They enter their unique tracking affiliate ID, they choose the configuration options they want, and grab the embed code, okay? So as a show of hands, who thinks it's gonna be more successful, right, for affiliates to grab it from the network's backend versus having to go to a configuration page and, and customize it and grab it? So who thinks it's gonna be more effective by having your, your widget integrated into a network backend? Right, hang on, come on, don't be shy, guys. Okay, and who thinks it's gonna be more effective widget configuration page? Okay, so it's a little bit, it's close, right? Most people don't have any hands I see to raise, but it's close in terms of people think that, you know, the networks are gonna be better, right? And the answer is you're both right, right? From a merchant perspective, it feels more natural to put my widget in the back end, but from our experience, what we've found, especially with the top affiliates, the ability to customize this widget and put it in their page with the look and feel that they're looking for and make it more natural in, integrated into their site, and I'll show you some examples of that in a second, right? That's very important for these types of creatives. So the answer is, if you can do both, that's the most effective thing, which is, for those affiliates that want to grab it just like the have other creative, great. But there are going to be a lot of your affiliates that want to customize this creative, and giving them the option to do both is very important. Size and speed, okay? And this is an extremely important thing. You cannot slow down someone's site, okay? When you talk about video, you talk about this, it's extremely important that the content does not slow down someone's site, okay? Because the second you slow down someone's site, the creative's taken off their page. If you want to keep this creative on someone's page, it must be fast to load, and must be fast, and must work, otherwise your affiliates are going to remove that. Auto update. And the other thing also is what's important and what's capable in this technology is you don't have to reach out towards your affiliates to continually update new creatives, right? In the past, if you have a, a banner, text-based link, you know, you send your email out, come grab the new creative, here's a new product offering. With this technology, you can then go and say, make changes that auto-populates that. So if you have specials and promotions that you want to promote, you can add that dynamically or remove old campaigns, and that auto-updates. There's no, there's no reason that affiliates have to come back and grab new creatives. They could just put that once on their site, and you can control the distribution of that. It's much better for the affiliates, less time that they're wasting grabbing new creatives, and much more powerful that you're keeping them up to date with the most powerful creatives. So let me just give you guys, you know, an example when you talk about the look and feel, oh, hold on one second, of, um, yep. You don't need RSS with that. With that. Exactly. Are you going to talk about RSS at all? No, no, we're not going to cover that. I'm saying RSS feed is different. I'm saying we're just we're talking specifically here in terms of the video content. It's important that when you're considering options that it should be auto-updatable in terms of the back end. So I'm just going to give you a couple different sites that have used um, our widget. When I talk about the look and feel, why that's important, this is a blog, software tips. You're powers. most likely familiar with an all-in-one printer, right? A printer, so scanner, a, copier, uh, and fax machine, all in one simple solution. So how can a PC be an all-in-one, and what does that look like? Well, let's take a look. But we really designed this to be very easy to use and fun to use. So what, what my point of this first widget, if you notice, it fits perfectly into the person's site. It doesn't seem like it's something that's sticking out. It, it fits in terms of the size, 
in terms of autoplay and autoplay in this site. Here's a fashion news site, which again... As blue as the safe. Caribbean Sea, this gorgeous four-carat blue topaz ring is an eye... Oh, what just happened? Oh, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. So anyways, I'm going to stop this just for the sake of time. Basically, it was two different examples of uh, widget sites, and we can show you more. But the point is, is that the reason to have this creative being configurable is that, especially for the top affiliates, the ones that are really driving sale, they want the, the look and feel of the site to fit within what they're trying to accomplish, and that's why it's important. So let, just in, in our remaining 15 minutes, because I want to leave a little bit of time for Q&A, let's talk about what really happens, okay? So this is a sample customer, right? A CJ customer from the month of May, right? Their banner links were about 2% click-through rate. Their text-based links were about 4%. With, you know, the Koof widget, right, the video widget, they were seeing 18% click-through. So substantially higher, right, click-through rates in terms of that. Now, I would love to take credit that our company is the greatest company in the world, which it is. But the truth is, is that video as a, as a tool is a very, very effective tool, okay? And one of the questions, and this is I get challenged on this, you know, more often than not, is, well, isn't it just like banners? When banners first came around, right, they were really, really effective, and then people got used to banners, and you get this banner blindness. And the answer is maybe, right? The difference is it's not just taking a YouTube video and sticking it on your site, because what's going to happen is that's exactly what's going to happen. People are going to be, or when people see that little play button today, Right, they're very used to clicking on that play button. They want to click on that play button. It's like something that you know drags their mouse. I have, it's a video. I have to watch it, right? But in, eventually, as that becomes more and more common, it's going to be something which is, oh yeah, you know, there's another video. Great, right? So it's important that what occurs around the video and the user experience within the video continues to evolve, right? That's the answer towards how video is going to continue to, to morph in terms of being an effective tool, and you don't run into the same problems that the, this banner blindness occurs. The other thing is, and this is interesting also, is you can actually now get more detailed analytics in terms of what's occurring as well. So this is, you know, kind of another breakdown of the slide, which is there's different ways, and just, you know, some samples from our widget, which is, you know, people can click and buy through in different ways, on a banner of the, of the widget, on the video itself, on the buy it now button. You can kind of drill down and get more analytical data in terms of what's occurring there as well. And then, this is actually another important slide is, and, we, and this kind of answers the question before, when you know, the, the drugstore video I took, I actually took it out of context, because normally it sits within a widget that has photos and information and has a buy it now button, so it, ha it answers all those questions you're looking for. And the point is, is that you can actually also see what other actions people are taking on your, on your site. Meaning, are they looking at comments? Are they looking at pictures? Are they looking at videos, other videos, information, playlists, right? The idea being is that by, by grabbing this information, and understanding what your users are doing, you could then present to them with, right, and customize the most effective tools. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we find that, you know, customer reviews or pictures are very highly clicked on as part of that click-through process. So then you may want to promote the pictures and customer reviews for your specific widget so that that becomes a key selling tool because you know people are going to be doing that, right? The idea being is let's look at what actions people are taking and create a customized version that are going to drive sales. And I said, again, I say that again, which is this is all about driving sales, right? And, and the point here is let's look at what actions are occurring. And then once we have these actions and we understand the actions that are occurring, then we can customize that um, as well. So, Question. yep. Okay, on, your, on your chart, your playlist, mm -hmm. give, give some examples of the playlist. So, yeah, so a playlist is multiple videos within the same footprint. So you can have, you know, basically up to 10 different videos, for example, that are in a playlist. So after the first one, again, so what happens there, what that's telling you, what's interesting is more, almost 50% of the people are looking what else is there. And why is that important to have more than one video? Because if the first video doesn't necessarily appeal to them, or that product doesn't appeal to them, you want to be able to give them other choices, right? So that's why having multiple different videos within the same footprint is very important because then they can search and find something that is of interest to them, right? That browsing capability. So like, again, that's the point. Because you looked at this, and what's the first thing you said? Well, what, what's a playlist? Why, why are they interested in playlists? What's interesting? So what, what, this, what this tells you is that what people are looking at is what comments people have about the product, what other videos are out there, and then what I would say, you know, based upon this, is that if I can offer more videos in my playlist, that's going to be something that people want to see. 
right? Because they want to be able to browse and look at different products and see what else may be of interest to them and, because, and then be able to potentially convert them based upon that. Okay, so I left 10 minutes for Q&A. Any questions or else you guys can have an early lunch? That was, that was like bad incentive probably to get questions, but <laughs> questions, yep. Um, why are you, uh, curiosity, why are you not addressing RSS? No, I'm saying, so I think RSS is a, is a, is a tool, right? It's a feed, yeah. right? I'm saying I'm not, I'm not not addressing it. I'm just saying it's just, it's just a, it's a feed just like you have other types of feeds. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not neither here nor there. As part of any solution, okay. you know, it's another potential, you know, use of technology. But I think in and of itself, it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's a, I think it's a different type of technology. That's all I'm saying. Okay. It's nothing against RSS at all. Yeah, I'm an RSS fan, but just, uh, yeah, curious. correct. Any other questions? Don't be shy, guys. So it's an excellent question. I actually, so as a disclaimer, I, uh, I worked four years at Akamai, across the river in Cambridge, so I'm a little bit partial towards them. Um, so you know, in terms of that, and again, I can, so I have a little bit of expertise in that side of the house as well. Um, I think what's important, first of all, is one, reliability. You want to find out in terms of the fact that what's their uptime rate, okay? What is, do they, are they, are they experts on streaming, okay? Because Streaming is different than, you know, just a video that you know video serving, or I would say video serving is different than image serving. Okay, what type of file format do they offer? Multiple types of downloads. So, for example, progressive download, where things are you know downloading. Right. Basically, what you're looking, the point of asking all those specific questions, are is this a, a hosting company that has an expertise in streaming video content? Right. Because if it's just a generic hosting company, they may not possess the expertise that's going to guarantee you what the nuances of um, what's required for you know streaming solutions. So you really you know want to work with a, a hosting company that ha professes and actually has you know in-house expertise in terms of handling multiple file formats, would be able to you know offer different options in terms of progressive download, non-progressive download, right? Depending upon your business model and be able to ensure the quality. And what I would also do is, you know, is specifically look and ask them for reference customers that are streaming with them and watch the videos, right? Go out and actually and, 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 you, and, and check out the quality of the video that they're saying, right? That is a huge determining factor in terms of the type of experience. Because even though they promise you the world, you want to get, you know, get, ask them for 10 or 20 different sites that are using them to actually stream their videos and then watch the quality of that video content. Uh, can you talk about BZNIP or not? Or I, I think that, yeah, we took after, I think they wanted to kind of keep it generic in terms of, you know, technology and then, you know, specific. If you want, we have a booth at oh, 936 if you want to talk specific fees. Any other questions? Yep, sorry. What's the best way to use video to drive traffic to your site? Correct. I'm saying, Rather than the selling once they get to your site. Correct. So again, that is a completely, completely different, you know, question, right? Because then uh, totally off our topic, right? Okay. Because there, again, I think that skill is very similar to kind of like an SEO type of skill, right? There are people who are like what they call SCM, you know, search, you know, they're they're like the, S, the search people. They're the social marketing experts. There's like the video guys, right? And what happens is. They'll put your video on Rever and on YouTube and on Meta Cafe and all these different sites and index them on that. And now YouTube, you know, now Google Search is starting to include, you know, video as part of their search tools. That really, I think, the answer to that question is much more for you know the, an SEO esque type of person to be able to say, okay, how do I, you know, for the millions of videos on YouTube, how do I distinguish myself and get you know get this to actually show up in search engine results? Or people to know it's there. So I think you know I'm, I'm by no means an expert in that side of the house, but I think that's more you know more like you're more likely to find the answer to that question with someone who is an SEO esque type of person who knows how to use video on those sites to drive traffic. And I think as part of your overall SEO strategy, you know any good SEO person will probably recommend using video and putting it in the right places and indexing keywords and things like that is definitely you know a, a good a good part 
of your portfolio of SEO options to include. Yep. So, I, so, so again, all of our video is flash based. So I don't, you know what I'm saying, I don't really differentiate so much from flash versus video. I think when it comes to, you know, the flash and what I classically call like SWF type of stuff, you know, what my own experience, you know, my user experience is the, the SWIFT stuff that I've seen is kind of, um, I'm trying to get a way to explain it, but it basically it's like, it, it's basically a cut up of a static of static pictures that are kind of merged together, right? It doesn't necessarily capture my attention as well as a video, and right? And most videos today are going to be flat FLV based, right? So the difference between SWF and FLV based, really, ease of use is basically you know the same thing. There's no great advantage. I my own personal experience has been that Swift is is more of kind of a graphics media and different than video. And again. Part of it also is I don't necessarily, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. You know, our own website, right, the main landing page is Swift, right? It's, an, it's a, you know, that's how you capture someone's attention. That's a classic building tool on websites, but I think that doesn't preclude you from having video. I think that they, they generally work hand in hand in terms of that. Last question, anyone else? Who wants to be the last one? Come on, very prestigious honor to be the last question. Yeah, so absolutely. So wrapped around it is information like photos, information. Again, part, I just cut that video short just for the sake of time, but that's exactly the point, is that the video itself, and again, I would not recommend to anyone necessarily just taking a YouTube video and sticking it in their site and saying, okay, I have video on my site, I'm done. You know, part of what we do is exactly that, which is wrapping all of the tools around that. So the way I explain it to people is, what is the point of a video, okay? The point of a video is to grab someone's attention, okay? I've accomplished that, now what? answer their questions. If I've pr provided a platform for them to answer their questions, read customer reviews, look at photos, information, which is what we provide as well, right, that is then now, now I've answered the question. And the last thing is, how do I, you know, create some type of incentive for them to take an action? So keep a call to action there, a buy it now button, write some type of X number of time remaining, things like that, kind of those direct response TV tools. That is the ultimate, you know, solution because you can add a coupon outside there, correct, absolutely, exactly. So the point is, is that that's exactly what you want to do. In other words, the whole point of video is that it's a, a part of your solution, right? And the reason, you know, our approach is very much in line with exactly what you're saying, which is it's not just sticking a video on your site, it's let's capture their attention with a video, let's make it very easy to put on someone's site, let's answer their questions, and most importantly, let's make a very simple and very persuasive approach to get them to click through and purchase the product that they're looking for. And that is the ultimate goal, right, of all of us, right? That's about selling, yeah. and that's exactly, you know, the, you know, the solutions that we provide. That's great. great. So, guys, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, I guess enjoy lunch. Talk to you later.